In this video, we're going to focus on how we can control the starting position. So if you refresh here, you will see the starting position will be now at the very bottom of this segment here. And we can control it to put it up or down or in the center. By default, it's always in the center, but now we just move it down here the bottom, which is very suitable if you're going to use a progress bar chart. So let's start to look how we can do this. So now let's start to look how to move the starting position of the bar chart in ChartJS. So the first thing what we need is we need to get a boiler template, which you can find here on chartjs3.com getting started. This specific link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on the site, just copy this entire chunk of code here. Copy this. And then if you want to understand right away what this all does, make sure you watch this video here. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste it all in here, we're going to cut this out and put that title in here. Save, refresh, there we are. So what I want to do here is I want to maximize the size of the bar chart. So I'm going to put in here in the chart box, 80%, save that, refresh, there we are. What I want to do as well is I want to make this a horizontal bar chart. So we're going to swap this a bit. So we're going to scroll down here into the options, put in here enter and say index axis because basically and we put in here index axis y and what this really does is it will swap the y or the x scale with the y scale so whatever is in here goes there and this one all these values goes here down refresh there we are next what i want to do is i want to make the bars extremely narrow so what we're going to do is here put a comma here and then we're going to say here we can say your bar category or sorry, bar percentage, that's the right term. Put it 0 0.1, which would indicate a 10% uh, thickness of the bar. As you can see here, it makes it very narrow. And if you make it one, it's 100% basically of the category. So we have this here now, and what we would like to do eventually is to push this down, for example, because having it in the center is maybe nice, but in our case, we just want to have it a little bit more down here. So how do we control this? So I'm going to scroll down here and in the options or in this curly braces, after that one here for the options, put a comma, we're going to say plugins, and then what we're going to do is create our own plugin. So we can call this our bar position. I'm going to copy this. Then what I'm going to do is slash slash, put in this here, and I'm going to say here, um, this is the bar position plugin block. And then we're going to say a constant bar position equals curly braces then we're going to say an id bar position comma and then we're going to define when would we like to draw the position of the bar in this case we need to make sure it will be drawn before we draw the data set so basically we need to figure out the position before that or else it's already too late for adjustment so this is very important so what we're going to say here before data sets draw and then what we're going to do here is we can say here the arguments, chart, art, and plugin options. And then create here a function error expression because this is basically a callback functionality. So then we're going to put that like that. All right. Then in here, what I'm going to do is I'm, do, I'm going to add up here what we call a uh, object destructuring. If you don't understand object destructuring, Go in the description box, it will explain to you exactly what that is. There's a video about that. It says, understanding object destruction with chart.js. So what I'm going to grab here is the curly braces equals chart, because we want to target this specific object, which is also an argument. So then what I want to do here is I'm going to say CTS, comma, then we can probably get the data, comma, chart area. And then what I want to do here is I will probably need a few items, not all of them, especially the top, maybe the bottom, and we're going to say here, comma, we just put in them all of them, that's fine, comma left, comma right, and then height, uh, width and height. But probably I will need the top and the height itself. Comma here, another one is the scales, and I need to grab here the X and Y scales. So now we have these here, what I want to do is, basically this I want to reposition this so I don't want to draw anything all what I want is to reposition where the drawing will start so this is very important so what we can do here is I'm going to say here first of all I'm going to grab here the height so if I do here console log height you will see here the height 
of the canvas where we, oh, if I refresh this one save that refresh all right interesting we get a mistake here or an error uh, let's see what is the error let's open up this we can say the unexpected token on 83 uh, I guess that's this one here do a column that's what we need sorry I guess uh, unexpected 87 here we have one and then there should be another one here all right save that refresh all right so that works now we have it all working you can see here the console log gives us the answer of this here the height is 460 pixels 0.6 so what I want to do is how many data labels do we have here one two three four five six seven so these labels here defines how many we have so we need to divide the height whatever you have here by seven so we get this category or this segment here this height how many pixels that is so what we're going to do here is how will we do this we're going to say here data and what i'm going to do here is a dot and basically what i want to extract is this one here from the data we can just say the labels because the labels define how many categories are being shown so we're going to say here dot labels and there's a here dot length and then we get here the number seven that's basically the length of the array and then we get here 65 pixels 0.8 all right so now we have this one here this works but of course we're not done yet because this we basically define the item here but what we want to do now is start to draw that in there so maybe we can just give this first of all let's say a constant bar height that's the first part so we get this 65.8 pixels so next what I want to do here is I want to create here well basically I need to get the chart dot get data set meta which is basically a built-in functionality from chart.js what this truly does is it will give us or show us all the information of the data set as of uh, the moment it's loading basically so this is very important and very useful so I'm going to say console log and then I'm going to save that refresh and you can see here we get all this information here of our data set and you can see here we get the pixels everything is in here what we want to do eventually is this one here uh, let's see here the X and the Y and the X and the Y here defines the position of where it starts and this is important for us because what we really want to do is we want to go maybe here then push it down 20 pixels so let's start to do that right now so we have this what we need to do here is we're going to do here I guess we can say we grab all of this and what I want to do then is I'm going to say here dot data if we do that we just move into the data area as you can see here so we have this array and because of that we can say here now a for each loop so a dot for each and we're going to loop through the data but the specific data I want to loop through is basically the y values I want to reassign the y values so what I'm going to say here this data and I'm just going to give this the data point and index those two are important for us so the data point is a shorthand basically for this part now so we have this and then what I want to do here I want to make sure that we have here two parentheses and then function error expression because it's a callback or uh, it's a for loop here uh, for each loop so now what I want to do is the following I want to grab here in this item we can just say maybe a constant and because we have here the y so I want to not use the same item so I can say here y position or y pos equals and then we're going to say here what exactly do I want well I want to grab here the y or the data y which is now or this data point so I'm going to say here data point dot y so that's the first one and then what I want to do here is basically start to calculate and uh, what we can do here is we can calculate the position mm, what we could do let me double check all right, so after looking, I realized this is apparently not even necessary, so that's my bad. What we need to do here is basically this. We're going to get the data point, and then what I want to say here, the data point, that is basically this, but then I want to have the data point Y, and what I need to do is I need to reassign that one. So if I do equal, 
So we want to reassign basically the data point dot y. So we say equal, and then I'm going to say here, uh, what we can do here is basically what we need to consider is the bar height. So we can say the bar height. Well, let's do this first. And then if I do this and save that and refresh, you can see what is going on is now we're positioning all of the bars on top of each other. Of course, that is not what we want. We want to push them down, but you can see them um, here now they're slightly not in the center. But we're going to control this. So I'm going to say here, we have this bar height, and then what I want to do here is, uh, we want to change that. We're going to say here, the top, and the reason why for the top is we need to consider this item here as well, top. So we're going to say top plus bar height, let's see what's going on. All right, so now we have the bar height here plus the top, and now we're moving exactly here down. That's the reason why we were not exactly here down, because of this item here. So now we have this, but if I would loop through this, we should be able to do this nicely. So we're going to say here, multiply. And then I'm going to do this, put this in parentheses, and I want to say here, multiply by that, but then this one here should be based on the index, and well, I'll, let me show you with the index and after we can do a parenthesis again. So if I save that, refresh, you can see here what's going on. We're here, but this is index zero. I wanna push it down to index one. So or basically we should start at one first. And then you will have this here at the bottom. So I'm going to say here, another parenthesis. And then I'm gonna say here, plus one. If I do that, save, refresh. Now we have this, but of course you can see here, this is not desirable because we're not, uh, we're hitting below the line here. So what we need to do here, instead of one, we can do maybe 0 0.8, save that, refresh. All right, we can do maybe even 0 0.9, refresh, maybe even 95, I guess. And then we're just on this. So the reason why this is useful is now, if I would move this, we should be always within the lines as you can see here as you can see here we're always within the item and we're never hitting outside of this specific segment for this category and that's very important and that's basically how you can control this we could do exactly the other way around uh, by saying here maybe 0 0.1 0 0.10 and then we're moving it up so with this we can control this this becomes important especially if you start to combine this with if you have the text here on the segment as well. So if you like this video, basically I have another one that is very nice to connect with that. This, for example, if you want to create a progress bar, in this case here, you can see here how to create a progress bar chart in Chart.js where we can, where we have the text here or the labels here and the values on the side here but of course, this is here in the center and having it combined with this by controlling where exactly you want to be in the center or at the bottom or at the very top, then with these two, you can combine it nicely.